<laughs> but um, in terms of the solution to the running back union, um, shout out to RC, Ryan Clark. He gave the example that we kind of talked about up here. It's strength in numbers. It didn't work when Elbow set up because Elbow was one person. Every single running back would have to do it together in order for them to move the needle in this in a way where or where owners are going to change how they view the position, how general managers are going to change how they view the position. But the problem with that is it's a ton of individuals. So for the five to not even five percent of running backs really that are even in this convo, right? We're talking about like the 1% of NFL running backs that get to the convo of you're worth more than $10 million. In order for those type of guys to get that type of money, the guy that's only worth $400,000 has to be willing to sit out and fight that exact same fight that the $10 million plus dollar running back is going to fight. And how do I make you feel like you're justified in sitting out to make him money when if you sit out you're not going to get a dime even though this guy's already made more money and he's in a position where he can sit out you got a wife you got a girlfriend you got kids you got your own life you got to deal with so trying to convince you and you on every single team and not just you that is on the active or practice squad but also the usfl version of you the XFL version of you, that kid that came out of college two years ago, got hurt, and now we call him Master T, and we bring him up every couple of times in training camp. Those are the type of guys that you also have to get to say, all right, yeah, I'm going to sit out too and fight this fight with you guys. That is a very, very, very tough thing to do. With the NFLPA as a whole, the union is in place to help everybody collectively but when you're talking about trying to make little amendments in the heart of the cba because it's still seven years remaining on the deal this is the type of stuff that really makes it almost impossible for those guys to really move the needle in that sense because it's just too many running backs out there that are starving that will go out there for half a mil and say yo you can have you can sit out there if you want talk about i'm not gonna go out there if i don't get 10 because you saw when Austin Eckler with the running back Zoom meet, and Najee was on the call as well, where they said, hey, man, well, no our, no running backs are going to show up to offseason workouts next year. That's cool. Until you get these younger dudes that don't have that type of money, the guys that weren't first-round picks, the guys like a Jalen Warren, or the guys that look at Jalen Warren and say, hey, Jalen, man, you play like that you want to. I'm going to come take your spot. That's, to me, is just like the, the real issue with trying to get this thing to work. Like, it's a lot of people out there, man. And the more people it is, the harder it is to get everybody to buy into that message, man. At least from my perspective. Uh, I was listening to Coward give some good takes on it. Yeah. I think it was fr- Thursday or Friday. And the one thing he mentioned is, like, I-, I think sometimes we get too high about certain things or, like, certain issues mm-hmm. as opposed to just sitting back, relaxing, and understanding mm-hmm. things go in waves. Things yep. go in cycles. And this is just a really bad down cycle for running backs where the running back market was a little bit more on the uptick, what, three, four, five years, years yeah. ago. So It swings. It goes back and forth. Yeah, All so if, does, if running backs can prove somehow, some way over the next yeah. year, two, three years that they are very critical, or at mm-hmm. least the elite ones are very critical to Super last, Bowl teams. That they can That's the other thing, that, too. Yeah, because... Yeah. Every running back that we will bring up and say, is he worth more than 10 mil? We all can go back and say, well, he was hurt this year. He missed some time that year. And that's also part of the issue. My other thing is this, and I actually want to get your thoughts on this because I had asked TG yesterday and we're talking about this convo. When we listen to these running backs, right, Saquon, we know he's like the poster boy right now for a running back that needs to get paid or that is most justified to get paid, right, above the 10 million mark. And we bring up Daniel Jones. Oh, Daniel's getting 40. What is Saquon's worth? What is, his, what is his value? But to me, would you pay Saquon Barkley more than $20 million a year? No. Nah. Would you pay Saquon Barkley more than $15 million a year? I'd be hesitant. Would you pay like him? Like TG said, uh, what, $10 million for the franchise tag? And that's why there's this back and forth and this stalemate. Because I don't think you see what I'm saying? the Giants want to pay too much more than that. I'm I don't like, blame them. Because to me, I said the most I could ever talk myself into today to pay Saquon would be 14. And the reason I said 14 was because Bajan's going to get 13 this year with signing the bonus and everything included being the rookie. And they're saying that that's technically the highest paid this year. So if 13 is the highest paid, then I would go 14 because I've seen you do it. But outside of that, I'm like, I don't feel comfortable paying you 14 per going forward when we know the nature of the position. 
Let me ask you this. Yeah. Say Bajon being a first round pick is out of the question. Like, don't okay. even worry about like, oh, we had to spend a first rounder on him. Mm-hmm. Who would you rather have, Bajon Robinson or Saquon Barkley going forward? Well, if you're talking about today, then it's Bajon because he's younger and he's healthy. I think that's the point. Yeah. I, I think that just exemplifies yeah. the point of this RB market right you. now. But the problem also becomes this. And in Bajon hasn't years, done jack shit in the league this, yet. In three years, we're going to say the exact same thing about Bajon. Are Probably, we yeah. But the only reason I say Bajon <laughs> is because of how talented he is. He's a top five pick, right? Yeah. Now, if we just brought up some rant, is he ever which ca- which, no, 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 which your, was your boy from Pitt. Which was uh, surprising, though, by the way. We thought he was going to go late first, second. And the Falcons oh, but, but the threw reason, a curveball But at think us. about it. The only reason we thought that was because of how people talk about the running back market. We said any other year, you're looking at this like Reggie Bush coming out. Yeah, he's dang like good. That, he's, he's you good. see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't feel like the Bajon to say Quan is an accurate or a fair assessment because of how we view Bajon. Let's bring up a different running back. You, you, you just Catherine brought up Pitt. at Benacana. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would take Saquon. I would take Saquon every single day. Unless I have a Pat Mahomes, unless I have a Josh Allen, unless I have one of them type of dudes. Otherwise, we have to weigh in the contracts for this discussion, right? Why? You said take no, out. No, you no, you have to. No, you I was. Literally said I take said out. take out that you have to give up a first round pick. But one of the reasons you're taking Bajon over Saquon too is less money. No, I wasn't doing that because Bajon's gonna get 13 mil this year, so it's not less money per year. It's less. Yeah, per year it's like less. The but I'm just simple, in the simple sense of this season because Saquon is gonna get one for ten this season. We don't have a long term deal for him, so that's why I looked at it like that. Okay, but either way, I mean, I think the benefit for Bajon is actually his next three four years but you're even saying yeah. just this year yeah, i just look at it as on this year because of how talented Bajan is yeah yeah but if uh, it wasn't for his talent and his style is what it falls more in line with the saquon it's not like a big bruiser it's not like this other style of back we're talking about the sexy ones that we pay now a banacanda might be a, a bad example for me because i actually really do like him i think he's gonna be really good because well, he played at pit we know that i got to see him too like he's good that, i'm telling I'm, you he's that's good what i'm saying like you're more close if you to it. Yeah, yeah if you gave me random right. running we back out running of the pack 12 yeah. maybe i would lean yeah. more barkley but mm-hmm. the thought is there uh a banacanda for what less than a million for the next four years. So you years? would rather cut cost and get production. That's fine. Yeah. I'm looking at production. I'm seriously I don't care thinking about, the about cut it. And the cost I, I th- I'm seriously thinking about it. Because yeah. you could save a ton of money and lose a ton of games. And that's what we see a ton of teams do. They save money. They cut costs where they need to. They overspend where they don't need to because this is what they say you're supposed to do. And then they find themselves in the exact same loophole of never going anywhere because you're cutting costs. Depends. I yeah. I don't know how many yeah. wins Barkley's worth. Maybe maybe it is a couple. I just I don't think he's taking you next level to, as I've said in the past, big winning or like serious Super Bowl aspirations. Yeah, but once again, you're putting a team stat on an individual. So that's my whole issue. It's no, it's not. I just I don't know how many. Yeah, I don't know how many wins he's worth. I don't know what the difference is in how good the Giants do. Yeah, like, because we're trying to put team stats on individuals. Like, what are we I doing here? But th- but if you're no, an organization, you that. that's what you're looking out no, for. It's is a the part team. of the formula. It definitely is a part of the formula. Absolutely, definitely is a part of the formula. But that's some of the issue that them dudes got to deal with right now. Yeah, I think yeah. ultimately it does just go back to what mm-hmm. TG and I were saying. Like you, you, nah. you need that quarterback. Now, yeah. is Daniel Jones the? Qu- I don't think he is for the Giants. Mm-hmm. So, but you're not going to take the forty from him. So no, well, uh, I mean I don't know if I would have paid him that to begin with. But I, I guess what I'm saying, their their reasoning for paying Daniel Jones is they do think he is their franchise quarterback at least to an extent, and they feel like. Signing him to that forty million per year, whatever it is, yeah. over the next three or four is years, a better option than yeah, because long-term. because the contracts should age better because quarterbacks get better yeah. as time goes on. Like yeah. he's Daniel Jones is going to be hitting his prime, and he's already four or five years in. I mean, that's the hope. That's the goal. Yeah, I understand why yeah. they're doing. That. <laughs> I understand why they're doing. That. I wouldn't have. Done, I just don't. Yeah. I don't think Danny Dimes is like this. But if you're the Giants like, organization, you draft him in the first round. You got to on, see him bro. develop. Yeah. Had a pretty decent season under yeah. Dayball. You do that. Yeah. And you say, would you rather run the risk of going back to the draft? Because the draft is an absolute. There's some good guys shoot. coming out. These we days. say that every single year. Zach Wilson every single year. Sam Darnold every single year. We can go down the list every single year. Yeah, that's why they did it. Yeah, yeah they they got a, they got a guy. They're, they're yeah. gonna they're gonna at least be relevant. They uh-huh. could sell tickets. They could 
sell their upcoming season way yeah. easier to Giants fans. Yeah. If you have a Daniel Jones mm-hmm. there, Cowboys, you have a Dak Prescott. Yeah. Prescott. Then, oh, let's just, because we don't think that this guy's an elite top five, let's just go draft another one. Let's go draft another one. It's like, all right. Danny Dimes That's does tough. have talent, though, That's where tough. I can still see yeah. development from him over the next three, four years, or at least over the length of this contract. Well, yeah, because that's the thing. Like, we both feel that, do you think Saquon, over the next five years, is better than where we are today versus Daniel Jones five years from now? I think Daniel Jones is a better player than Should he be. is yeah. now, whereas when we talk Saquon in five years, you're like, bro, you're a running back. <laughs> like. Yeah, there's no really chance. Two. Yeah. What's he, 26 right yeah, now? Yeah, but you got, you got He'll be two, 31, two and a half 32. max, baby. Two and a half max, and we know what time it is, man. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that's the state of the game. So, let's but just... Shoot, you know the other part that's crazy with it? Even with this running back stuff, going back to the union part and talking about why still I don't think this ever works. We're talking about Saquon right now, right? Who did the Giants just bring in, though? I don't know. The former 1,000-yard rush from the Jacksonville that? Jaguars with Justin New England a year ago, James Robinson. <laughs> It's like, yo, they're already making plays. You already got an action. Like, you look at even with Baltimore, J.K. Dobbs, one of the dudes on the call as well, who they just signed. We're going to talk about him in a little bit. Melvin Gordon. It's like, it's just too difficult at times to have everybody wanting to buy in on this thing, man. Because the same people that complained about, I can't get this much money, are signing right now for the money that they get. And it kills any argument that you're making with it, man. In terms of some of them dudes, though. Uh, here's the other yeah. thing. This is just one position. I Mm -hmm. would be interested in how any other position felt about this. If, like, they were just giving the running back special treatment in the upcoming, like, union negotiations. Because this is another point. Yeah, this is the other point Coward brought up. He's like, bro, what about your, like, centers or, like, left guards, right guards? We just paid Isaac Sam out, I think, $8 million per year, and he's considered a top five guard. This is the problem, bro. It started with quarterbacks. Quarterbacks have gotten every special treatment, right? It's to the point where people even recommend, just take the quarterbacks off the salary cap so we can just pay them however much we need to pay them. Think about that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Who brought that one up? I've seen it multiple times. <laughs> oh, man, just take them out of the salary cap. They can get, they're just in their own class because everybody needs a quarterback, so you just pay them whatever. It's like, no. That's not Could how be that a works, solution. Man. It's not how that works. For anymore. the running backs and everyone else getting paid more. Could be a solution. No. Nah. <laughs> that's part of the issue. Because then when the owner's like, man, I can only pay so much money, man. I, I only got so much money. You're like, bro, how many times are we going to hear the same excuse? Oh, I don't have any more money. I'm paying the quarterback $200 million now per year, but I don't have any other money for these other positions, man. But you know it's quarterback. So I mentioned the running backs yeah. doing good for themselves by, you know, playing good over the next mm-hmm. however many years. Uh, maybe showing that they can be, at least if you're an elite running back, be a critical piece yeah. to a Super Bowl winning team. Like, show that, and maybe your market could go up. But also, mm-hmm. I've mentioned this how many times, the quarterback market, I think, is going to be an indicator, too. It's like like how Deshaun years, Watson's yeah. contract plays out. Daniel Kyler Murray's Jones, contract. Kyler, Daniel Jones. Absolutely. All these guys that got guys. the 40-plus. Mm-hmm. Let's see how they play out. Yeah, absolutely Because right, that right. could maybe open up some more money for other positions. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that goes to running backs. That might just go to another position. That's not running Left back. tackle, wide right. receiver, pass <laughs> rusher, cornerback. Yeah. The same people getting paid. We know that. But like I said, we this and you've said this at the beginning, where you're like, man, it's just the flow of it. It's only a handful of running backs that are legitimately in this conversation. Looking at some of the names that were on that Zoom call, I'm like, bro, all y'all aren't in that combo, man. And and another thing would be like, as if yeah. these guys actually sit out. Josh yeah, Jacobs, yeah. I'm hearing reports, he's not playing. He's not season. gonna show yeah. All right, if the Raiders, do they have a guy? Who do they have on the roster? But, but let's is, say they sign Fournette, and Fournette does really good. That, that's but, not going to help. But this is the thing. Josh sitting out without other running backs sitting out, it defeats the purpose. It's L. Bell. You're a solo mission. You're not going to win this fight as a solo. But that's the whole reason why this fight, to me, is never going to work outside of a CBA convo. Because it's way too many individuals. We literally just talked about two guys who were on the Zoom call for running backs to get more money. And their team signed running backs right then and there. Melvin Gordon. He was literally a couple months ago talking about how the market was terrible. It sucks what they're paying us. He literally just took a one for three. So That's probably above market value for him right now. You can make a case for it. (laughs) But but that's part of the (laughs) issue. It's like, man, you see what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get big money, but we can't get that if we say we're going to sit out and you guys sign them type of deals, bro. Because now that hurts us. 
you're not going to sit out. You're going to show up. You're going to get your money. Can't blame the dudes yeah. for signing them, though. And that's the part. Because it's like, I see all the angles. I'll take a three mil here. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Especially if you're not in the 10 mil combo. If I'm if if I'm in the 13 plus mil combo, why am I taking 13 plus mil stances on stuff that don't apply to me? I'm a five mil dude. I'm a three mil dude. I'm a two mil Melvin dude. Melvin Gordon already had that he, exactly. back with the Chargers. Then he sit out a couple key, games. He's part of this too. Yeah. He's part of the, the, the holy, the holy, uh, the forefathers, the, 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 the Zeke, uh, L, yeah. Bell, He's the, the light girly. version. Yeah. It was David Johnson, but Melvin was in that convo. He was one of them. Yeah. And that contract didn't he play out too well. He was one of them, right. So it's like, I see some of the stuff that he doing. I'm like, yo, this, this hurts us though. Like if, in terms of the running backs trying to get that, wow, it's in the middle of a CBA. Because when the CBA ends in seven years, it's a different convo. Because now we say, okay, what's the goal of this year? What's the goal of this new agreement for the next 10 years? We want running backs to be able to get out of rookie contracts in year two. We want to uh, put a floor where you can't franchise tag them. But if they're worth franchise tag, then it's a hard number, not a sliding scale. Something like that. But that can't happen in the middle of the CBA contract. That has to happen at the end of it where everybody's just clean slate. Let's talk about it right now. This is more, we're all passionate about it. We're just, okay, we feel like we should feel moved by this, but we don't really have the true definition or the direction or what even makes sense right now. We're just over here like, yo, just do it, just do it. Why? How? What makes sense? So that's part, like I said, unless all these running backs decide to really sit out together, I don't think this is ever going to work right now, bro. Like, I don't see a change happening. No. Nah. And I don't think it's necessarily smart for Josh Jacobs to sit out. I don't either. You, you History saw repeats Bell. itself. Well, because think about this, man. Even though L. Bell made the money he made, he still is going to forever have to live with, I lost 14 mil because I set out. And that's one of the things, if Josh Jacobs sits out, you're sitting out from the 10. So regardless of how much you might make somewhere else, that's still 10 that you were guaranteed to have. I get it. It's a year you're prime too. Yeah. Now his rebuttal would be like a year in my prime where I'm probably getting another 400 touches well, and wearing out my body. Because Chubb brought that up. Nick Chubb said we're the only position where our production hurts us. If I show I can for contracts, if I yeah. show I can carry the ball 400 times and give you 1500 rushing yards, you're gonna turn around and say I'm getting used up. I'm slowing down. <laughs> Any other position, true. if I catch a hundred passes, sucks. if I catch a hundred passes, see, sucks. we're like, bro, he's elite. He got hands. If you catch two hundred passes, he's going off. It's crazy. Maybe the more running backs got to be like a McCaffrey and Le'Veon Bell. Mm. That's a skill set you got to improve. What you mean? Because is, is anyone thinking McCaffrey is just all of a sudden going to fall off a cliff over the next year? Or two? You're worried about him being hurt. That's why Carolina moved on. Yeah, he's just injury prone. But what I'm saying is he is utilized a lot in the passing you game literally too. Literally, just said he's injury prone. That's just who he's been ever since he got in the league. Because of what? All right. There are some running backs that hold up better than others, though. Chubb is probably one of the best at it right now. Yeah. Who else we put in there? I would have said Henry. So he started falling down? Mixon? Yeah. I feel like Mixon's pretty doable. I thought Henry was hurt a lot more last year, but I checked. I think he played he in 15 played, games. Bro, he had 1,400. Yeah. Was it he was hurt right before the playoffs or something? It was something like that. He was nicked, yeah. But he still... Still did his thing, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, Hen I mean, Henry missed those, what, eight games in mm -hmm. 2021. But he's been pretty durable yeah. this whole time. Chubb, you're right. I mean, hell, Jonathan Taylor just got hurt. JK only one for three right now. Had one successful season injury, he's and he's on a pup right now. Najee. Najee's holding up. He wasn't at the beginning of the season. He's out there. He said he trained his body to do it. Well, this year we're hoping it's a better outcome, right? Yeah. But we're saying last year we didn't feel like that. Last year we had questions going into to the bye week. Is he going to be back healthy? Do we shut it down for the season? Remember, the, we was having those call, them talks. I was a, I was a front runner in those <laughs> like, conversations. It was legit. That was, it wasn't like we was forced to I shut him down for the season. A couple but weeks it was to like get legit, right. It was yeah. legit convos, yeah. So we still can't even say there's been two full seasons now. I'm just saying, bringing some extra versatility to your game where you could be the starting running back and yeah. also maybe your team's best slot option or second best slot option. I now, that's a lot. That's I mean, that, lot that's how you for. increase your value, though, to yeah, a team. But everybody's body isn't like that. Everybody isn't capable of being that. 
And that's what we talk about, the Saquons, the CMCs, the Kamaras, even a Bajan in that category because of that. Debo Samuel. It's not a lot of them that can do those type of things, but that's why those are the outliers that get paid the way that they get paid, right? Could that be the way to go about it, though? You start I think that's an, I think looking that's into your tough. skill as like a route runner as a receiver first, and then you go and play running back if your team needs it just so, to fill that void. Because we've seen running backs go so to halfbacks and have success. If I play wide receiver, why would I want to play running back? It's just bringing value to the team. But I'm I'm thinking if you if bring I play wide receiver, if what, you bring that yeah. skill set to the table to your team and being like a, a good slot yeah. receiver, just a good receiver, like you're gonna get paid more. Is what I'm saying. You're gonna start getting paid more like receiver. Yeah. It's just that you could do the halfback thing as well. I think Debo Samuel was able to successfully do that. If I remember I'm just talking about, like, I I think in the Cordell next Patterson, 10, 15 years. I'm not saying this yeah, is imminent well, at all. Well, no, because I'm thinking of, like, the, like, what that even looks like. I don't know. It just, it just seems tough, man. I feel like if I, if I got a dude that want to play running back, I'm like, bro, go play linebacker. You got a better chance of getting paid. Roquan Swift got 100. Think about it. You you got a way better chance of getting that. Tremaine Edmonds, you got a way better chance of getting that. Simple solution is uh, yeah. take the NFL rules back to what it was in the 90s and 2000s. I think running backs will be more valuable well, there. Or you go back to franchise tag only for quarterbacks. Franchise tag only for quarterbacks. Because that's what it was designed for initially. Was it? Yeah. I didn't know Just that. Just for the quarterback. Yeah. I because of how that. big they were at the time. And it was like a big ordeal. Now you can use it to a handcuff of running back if you choose to. Or essentially to control your first rounder. So they can't just come in here for four years, do everything, and then leave you high and dry. You at least control that fifth option. I don't mind that rule. Yeah. I don't at all. Because at least with that, now for Saquon, you're not capped at 10. You can't say across the board, we're not going to negotiate over this number because this is the number. Right now, every team that's negotiating with a running back is saying, right now, I'm not going over 10 mil because that's the franchise tag. And it essentially has created a hard cap yeah. on that position right now. And it's not singling out or making the running back – room special, special right. from all the other more nah, physical positions we're just simply saying that now we can't as a owner turn around to you after you didn't put in all that work to get here to negotiate and say i don't have like to saquon would be a free agent right now right it would just be bro the number is what it is although wait uh, no he wouldn't be a free agent because what's he the says deal with his year. fifth year option is well, that already passed no no yeah yeah the fifth year's already done this is the franchise okay. tag year yeah fifth so he'll be unrestricted done. right if we remove the franchise absolutely tag. so it's like that'd be cool if now that. you get a chance to really negotiate up until the the end of it but after that it's like all right collusion maybe we can't get the deal well, you gotta worry about that too <laughs> you gotta worry about that absolutely you definitely gotta worry about that but that's some of the stuff though like for me that i consider that i think of is like would that change it now they could still collude. i wouldn't mind that they could all. still collude and say we're not gonna pay over this <laughs> But I just feel like you at least hope that it might be a little bit different, right? It's like playing the slots versus playing like the blackjack table. Slots, you'd be like, all right, this might be rare. Blackjack, uh, at least lie to me. At least figure you line. I feel like a team, you have money, you got a rookie quarterback. You'd be willing to pay Saquon maybe 11, 12 plus for like two or three years while your right. quarterback's on that rookie deal. And you wouldn't just simply to be a safety say, valve out there. Right. But you wouldn't just simply say, I'm not going to pay you more than 10 because the franchise tag says 10. And I just think that that would be a different convo to have with them dudes. Yeah. Because, yeah, if you even say, hey, Saquon, we'll give you 11, we'll give you 12, maybe that is different than I'm not going over 10 because that's the franchise tag. I'm not even entertaining it because that's the franchise tag. 